So, we will continue the discussion on the heating values uh, uh, of the combustion process which we have seen in the last lecture. Okay. So, uh, we have seen that the, there are two heating values one at constant pressure and one at constant volume and the difference between them we have understood. So, now let us also there are there, there is one more uh, distinction which we you need to understand and that distinction is between two quantities which is called as the higher heating value and the lower heating value. So, Q H H V or L H V stands for higher heating value and lower heating value. So, what is the concept behind it? The idea is that many fuels as you have seen they have they, they are hydrocarbons okay? C and H M for example. Now, this, this H when it reacts with the oxygen or the air for example, okay, you will get CO2 and you can also get water. Okay. So, this water depending on what pressure you are doing the combustion and what temperature you are uh, uh, you are operating at this water can exist in the form of gas that is steam or if you cool down the products for example, let us say at one atmospheric pressure you are doing a combustion uh, let us say process and then so you have uh, you, you have a large chamber and you have some coal for example or you have some hydrocarbon is there let us say CH4 or methane or whatever and you are sort of burning it and you are collecting this at constant pressure that means you are you are allowing the piston to go up okay as as the combustion products come in the piston goes up the pressure remains constant and then you cool the entire products that is co2 and h2o you cool it down let us say at one atmospheric pressure to 25 degree centigrade okay so what happens is that when you cool it down the h2o which was in steam because it's a pure substance and it exists in a particular phase at a particular given temperature and pressure. So, this H2O can condense okay? and as you know if the H2O condenses then it will take the latent heat of condensation along with it. That means, the steam the, 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 the steam will condense and it will give away the latent heat. So, you will have some extra let us say you will have some extra available energy which if the if the steam is in the in the ga gaseous form then it is it is hidden as the uh, 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 that that portion of the heat is actually part of the steam but if it is if it converts to liquid okay so then the amount of steam which has converted that much amount of latent heat is actually available to you also for doing some positive work so if you want to take the q out of this okay so the q out can increase if the steam gets condensed and that much amount of extra latent heat which was hidden in the steam is also now coming out. So, that is the latent portion, the latent portion is coming out uh, uh, from this particular combustion reaction. So, if that happens then naturally that value will be called as the higher heating value. So, the higher heating value corresponds to the, the, the condition when the products of combustion containing steam are actually condensed to or are actually existing in such a manner that the steam contained in that combustion product is a sort of uh, is condensed and you are getting some extra heat. But if you do not do that, if you do not allow it to do for example, in a typical IC engine okay, especially uh, uh, in, in all normal automobile engines for example, the exit temperature um, is sufficiently high. Uh, and therefore, at that uh, in, in under that condition, uh, the steam does not get condensed. Okay, so it, it comes out at least from the combustion chamber. Sometimes in the winter season, you have seen that there is some water dripping uh, at the back of your automobile, for example. Okay, so where does that water come from? Essentially, that water actually the exhaust comes out of the engine, and then as it is passing through the muffler through the catalytic converter, for example, and then it is it is cooling down. Okay, and if the dew point temperature outside is cold enough then that steam will actually condense. However, mind you this particular latent heat which we have got is not inside the engine from as from inside the engine it came out as steam that is gas. Okay? So, we could not take out the latent heat inside the engine which is not desirable also because we do not want liquid water to come inside. So, for most practical applications uh, you will see that uh, the 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 applicable uh, heating value of the fuel is the lower calorific value or the lower heating value. If you subtract the two as I have written here 
if you subtract the higher uh, heating value from the lower heating value at a certain pressure for example and of course this is operating at a certain temperature so you will get naturally this is per unit mass basis so if you say m dot fuel is the mass flow rate of the fuel so and then this is the calorific value per unit mass so this is divided by kilogram and this is kilo kg per second so you are getting uh, 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 the 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 value here in the in the proper consistent units so this must be equal to the mass of water which is there multiplied by the latent heat H hfg of the water okay so the difference between the higher heating value and the lower heating value is actually equal to uh, is or proportional to the amount of water which has condensed taking away the latent heat uh, from the, the uh, from the total enthalpy which is available in the product so th that is the basic difference now in the last lecture we have also seen that if the, the let, let us say you have the reactants and you have the products okay let us assume that both of both of them are in the gas phase right now okay so we are dealing with the lower heating value only for example okay uh, and in this in this graph what i have plotted is either the internal energy of the reactants and the internal energy of the product naturally the product consists of several mixtures and if you know the mixture composition you can get the average enthalpy from basic mixture gravimetric calculations so what i have plotted here is the variation of internal energy or variation of enthalpy it, it can be anything this is just a representative diagram as a function of temperature okay as a function of the temperature of the reactants or the products so there are two important things to be noted in this graph the first thing is that the slope of this the slope of this curve okay either here or here if you find the slope at any point okay this slope will represents it will be the re, the, the the change in internal energy del u over del t or it will be del h over del t so this represents the slope represents the specific heat of the reactants or the specific heat at constant volume or the specific heat at constant pressure depending on whether this is u or h okay so for the time being let us say that this is enthalpy okay so you will have the the specific heat at constant pressure for reactants at this temperature t similarly you can get the slope here so two things are coming out of this particular graph one thing is that the specific heat is changing that means the slope the slope of the specific heat or the the slope of h versus t graph is actually changing with temperature okay and you can also see that the difference the difference between the enthalpy of the reactant and the product at a lower temperature is different than the dif the 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 difference between the enthalpy of the reactant and the product at a higher temperature so 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 this this particular product line is actually moving closer to the reactant line as you increase the temperature so the slope is also changing and the difference between and mind you what is the difference this difference is the heat of reaction at this temperature so if if the temperature is t0 that means this temperature is the reference temperature then at this reference temperature your your delta h okay the of p minus r is a negative quantity so this this delta h is the heat of reaction at the reference temperature which is called as the heating value so you can also call it delta h 0 for example and this is again delta h this is again the heating value or the or the change in the enth enthalpy at the of the reactants and the products but this is at a higher temperature t so two things are important from this graph one is that the slope changes that means the specific heat changes and i have told you in the class also that uh, you need to know the exact specific heat of the reactants also because this this is a this is a combined line which is representing the fuel so that fuel may be have 450 500 or even 200 or even one particular compound so it can be a mixture so this is a mixture unburnt mixture the properties of unburnt mixture and this represents the properties of the burnt mixture okay so both these properties should be known and this graph should be known for you to do basic calculations so that you can get the difference between 
the, the, uh, the, the, the enthalpy of the reactants and the enthalpy of the product. Now, one thing which is interesting to note on this particular graph is let us say we want to do a combustion experiment okay, and as, as we have seen two cases. So, in one of the cases the piston was stagnant, so d v was 0, so this is at constant volume and in the other one the piston was free to move, so this was constant pressure p constant ok, this was at uh, p constant. Now, let us say we have 1 mole of fuel or 1 kg of fuel and we have stoichiometric, we have exact uh, 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 let us say we have exact air and we want to do a complete combustion ok. Now, once the complete combustion takes place and what we also do is we insulate the entire system. That means, we do not allow any heat to go in, uh, go in or go out ok. So, that means, the d q is also equal to 0 ok. So, what does this mean? If I apply the first law of thermodynamics here d q is equal to d u plus d w ok. So, that means, it says that d u or delta u is equal to 0 because d, d w is equal to 0 because d v is 0 and the d q is also equal to 0. So, with both these conditions you get d u is equal to 0 that means, u p minus u r is equal to 0. What does this mean? This means u p is equal to u r or in this case we are dealing with internal energy because it is we, we are not dealing with enthalpy here because there is no flow work which is taking place at constant volume. So, we are talking of u p minus u r. So, if this is u for example, if this is u and t and this is th this is the graph, then what are we saying that let us say if the reactants are at a certain temperature and you have done the combustion, the heat has come in ok and you have done it at constant volume and adiabatic. So, no q ok, you do not allow this is insulation ok. So, what will happen? The u p will be equal to u r that means, whatever is the value of this u r, the value of u p must be the same ok. So, essentially what we are saying is that if you do a combustion reaction at constant volume in an adiabatic system, then the internal energy which you started with ok is already present even after the combustion is complete ok. That means, after the entire things were burnt down here, the totality there is no mass exchange which has taken place, there is no heat which has gone out, there is no work done which is there. So, that means, the energy which which we started with must be the same even now because it is a completely closed system and we have also not allowed any heat to go out. So, then if you measure the temperature now ok, under such conditions if you measure the temperature that means, this is the temperature of the product. If you measure the temperature of the product ok, this will be the T p in such a situation ok and this temperature will be called as the adiabatic temperature of this particular reaction under the constant volume uh, let us say boundary condition. So, this temperature will come out and this is the mind you for a given condition that means, that it can be stoichiometric, it can be excess air, it can be lower air. However, if it is complete combustion then of course, we can define as a, as a parameter. So, depending on whatever is the condition if you do if you burn a particular mass of fuel with a particular mass of oxidant in a closed chamber and do not allow any heat to go out there will be a maximum temperature which will be reached ok and this is that maximum temperature which will be reached inside this combustion chamber and this maximum temperature is called as the adiabatic temperature at this particular condition ok now what is the importance of adiabatic uh, temperature essentially you know that the, the thermal efficiency of the engine actually depends on the maximum temperature at which you are operating or the maximum temperature uh, uh, is the limiting is the limiting condition. In, in normal conditions naturally you cannot keep it completely insulated and some amount of heat actually goes out from this system. So, you are not able to achieve the adiabatic temperature at all. However, uh, 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 for the sake of benchmarking ok, we can uh, we can say that 
the, this temperature actually corresponds to the maximum amount of efficiency which can which you can ever achieve okay if at all you would have done this naturally uh, in this case there is no work done so uh, so uh, we are actually not producing any work however the adiabatic flame temperature is important because it it signifies the fact that whatever internal energy you started with you ended up with the same internal energy however now the temperature has increased because heat has come in uh, the products are still inside the system and naturally the slope the cp here and the cp here will determine how much of the energy has been actually utilized by the fuel air mixture itself to raise its own temperature and then of course now there is a there is a the combustion also taking place so you are actually left with co2 h2o and other products here okay in a very similar manner we can we can define the adiabatic adiabatic temperature or adiabatic flame temperature if we do the same process in a constant pressure process okay so here also what we will do is we will make it adiabatic however in this case your delta q was equal to hp minus hr okay because the work done which is do, which is the flow work which is happening here rather than up minus ur we are, we we end up with hp minus hr as we have uh, as we have uh, sort of done it in the last class okay uh, so now if if you if you make this adiabatic that means you are now not allowing any heat to go out that means this becomes equal to zero and therefore you will get hp minus hr equal to 0 and therefore your hp will be equal to hr so again if we plot let us say h here in that case your hr will be equal to hp and this temperature now will be the adiabatic temperature which will be obtained at constant pressure naturally if all the other conditions are same then the adiabatic temperature here will be larger than the adiabatic temperature under this condition because in this condition the the the, the to maintain the pressure the piston was going up and therefore uh, you, uh, you 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 were expending some of the work in in pushing this in pushing this upward okay so in this lecture uh, we have actually defined what is called as adiabatic flame temperature so there are two or three things which you have to remember first of all what is the heating value of the fuel then the heating value of the fuel under different boundary conditions that is constant volume uh, heat, uh, combustion or constant pressure combustion then the difference between the higher heating value and the lower heating value uh, depending on whether the the steam is uh, in the gas gaseous form or the steam which is produced uh, in the hydrogen uh, contained fuel is in the liquid form okay and then the third thing which we have tried to understand today is that when adiabatic combustion takes place the enthalpy of the product and the enthalpy of the reactant remains constant if it is done at constant pressure and the internal energy of the product and the internal energy of the reactant will remain the same if the same combustion reaction is taking place at constant volume under adiabatic conditions so these are fundamental definitions uh, which you should uh, you should know uh, 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 to to apply them uh, in real time situations when we apply this to an actual ic engine uh, application so in the next lecture we will actually try to understand these processes in a uh, in a detailed fashion